G'day community and welcome back to the Jock Reynolds Supercoach Podcast. I am Lek Dog. I am joined by the second hairiest man in my life, Patch. The... Lek Dog, who is possibly hairier than me in your life? Daniel Rich. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, maybe I'll allow it. He's... I thought you were gonna say I thought you gonna say Carl the dog, and I'm like that would be fair, but no, you're definitely hairier than my dog. That's okay. a fact. Good, I'm glad. So, how Patrick, are you? I'm very well. Very I hope good. you're well as well. Yes. Um, yes. We're trying out recording this as video. I'm already foreseeing this as having issues um, based on internet connections, but we'll give it a crack. The first thing I wanted to shout out, Patch, was uh, just a shout out to the community. The Jock Reynolds Supercoach team is always keen for more riders and contributors to jump on board. So if you're sitting out there thinking, I wish I could write and connect and expand my horizons, well, we're always looking for people to jump on board. You don't even have to really have a history of, of having written stuff. Just send us... Yep an idea of what you might want to talk about and we're happy to have you on board. Yeah, we can have a look at the stuff you're doing and like there's no it's like that's how people learn to write. You just like that's how I got a start in in writing and now I I write all the time, every day. Too much, you some do. might say. <laughs> um, you do write a lot. So yeah, give it a crack. Like yeah, we're not gonna we're not gonna yell at you, not gonna knock you down. Um if you like writing writing words and putting super coach stuff together. Come join us. If you want to do draft stuff, I'd love to do more draft stuff. I just don't have time. If you want to do like rankings and shit, like go for it. Yeah. So if you want to reach out to us, just reach out to the Jock account on Twitter or any of us on Twitter. If you're not on Twitter, hit us up on Facebook. In the comments of this post, you can find us. Let us know if you're interested because we do have some some uh, pretty regular content that needs to be filled as well as pre-season content. And this is our first attempt, you and I, first attempt patch. Obviously, the mailbag is going strong already. Mm. And Damo's been putting up his uh, cheapy and mid-pricer guides on the platform. But you and I, this is our first chance to do some yes. pre-season content. So what is are we going to do today, Patch? Uh, we're going to make a team because I opened Supercoach when it first opened just after Christmas and had a bit of fun making a team. And then I opened it maybe a week ago and had a quick play around with a few things and made a team uh, again that was slightly less bad than the first one. But that's it. That's all I've done. I've done like two teams and no fiddling and no nothing really. But I think that's still somehow more than what you've been doing. I haven't. I opened it on the first day. I tweeted out my first draft and I haven't done another tinker to my side patch but you know it's all been working in the background i'm kind of like uh you know albert einstein used to have problems he was trying to solve so he would go and do something else and it would solve itself in his brain i think that's what's been happening in the back of my head patch that's good i'm glad it works for one of us because every time i walk off and leave my problems alone they i come back and they're bigger problems and have scarier consequences but anyway um, maybe that'll work. Maybe it'll it'll have worked here. So we'll well, uh, we'll find out. Let's dive in. There's only two rules of engagement here. We can each nominate one of our selections as non-negotiable, an absolute lock, and we can't do anything about it. And we each get one veto. We can use. We don't have to use. But if we absolutely disagree with someone with each other, we've got one veto each, one lock each. You can't veto a lock. That's the only rules of engagement. We're going to go through, pick a team, take you through the process and let us know what you think at the end community. Yes. Patch, I always feel like the easiest place to start for me is with rookies. I'm interested to see if you feel the same. Yeah, no, I the, the rookies dictate structures and that's that's always how I played it. That's how a lot of people play it. If you, you don't have the rookies in a line, then you just can't. You have to go more. You have to have more mid prices, more primos. So I think if we put some rookies in, we get at least an idea of the shape of the side and know where most of the money's going, where most of the money's sticking around, you know, because if you, you know, we had a few years ago where it's like, oh, we can have a rookie R2. There was enough rocks that you could, you could run a rookie R2. You know, that, that changed the, the complete dynamic of, of most people's sides, if that was the case. So yeah, let, let's just, let's whack some rookies in, fang a few rookies around, see how we go. 
All right, let's start in defense, Patch. I reckon our price range probably starts at a Nick Caulfield $208,000 selection. I'm not saying we pick him. Yep. I'm saying I think that's where we start looking. Yep, uh, you could mount an argument that Liam Jones at 228k is in that bracket, but I feel like that's I feel like that's slightly too high. So let, let's start at the 208k at Nick Caulfield. Yeah. Do you want to pick Nick, Nick Caulfield? For the sake of this discussion, I'll say no, although word is he's bigger and stronger than he's ever been. But he had some off-season setbacks, had a surgery as well. They say he's going to be right for the preseason matches. When we see him play the preseason matches, he can enter our discussion, but I don't want him. Probably the first guy I'm interested in at 192K is Josh Gota. Yeah. Yep, Are we again. just going to lock him away to just start Just lock him away. Off? I think we saw enough last year. We saw the 70 points in the last round, you know, North, obviously, you know, looking at him, I, I don't think it's too much of a question at this stage. Obviously, you know, a lot of preseason, none of these rookies are completely locked in. It could change very quickly, very easily. But I think Goder is is very safe, and I think we just we just lock him in. I think Ruben Gimby as well is in the same boat. Whether we put him here in, in the midfield, I'm not sure, but I think Gimby's one we don't really need to discuss either. We just throw him in there. Agree. Let's chuck him in. People are going to discuss Tom Cole, maybe even Aaron Francis if he breaks into that side, but Ruben Ginby is the next one for me in this price packet. Connor McKenna at 167k is going to be an interesting priced player or an interesting player this year. If you listen to the mailbag, uh, DR reckons that he is best 22. Some Brisbane fans reckon he's not best 22. Is he going to be in our joint super coach side? I think for now, um, the way I always play it at this stage of the year is, you know, I, I pick the more expensive rookies because then you can really easily downgrade them to, you know, if we get a 123k rookie pop up, you can go McKenna down to him. If it's not best 22, it's hard to go the other way. So, you know, I think McKenna probably, like he might play forward, he might play as the sub because he'd be a really good, like speedy sub. I think at this stage, it's too far out to really be questioning it too much. So McKenna in the side. Agree. You can mount an argument for quite a few of these guys, McPherson, or they got injured in the offseason by Slinger. But I reckon the next guy that we're going to consider is probably Josh Weddle at $130,000. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm not too sure where the Hawks will play him. And if he gets a run early, if they want him to bulk up and, and become a, a traditional key defender, if they're like, no, just play in the midfield, just do a Mark Blitzarves role, which is what they spoke about on draft night. I don't know. I think for now, yeah, let, let's chuck him in. Um, you know, yeah, at this stage, it's too early to tell uh, too much beyond that. So I think um, Weddle goes in, and then I think Campbell Chesser as well, which is he's only a few rungs down. I think he can get chucked in. Agreed, which gives us five rookie price players to start. Obviously, we're going to tinker with this. Just scrolling through the remaining list of guys that we might consider if we wanted to go full rookies. Uh, Charlie Dean is in the discussion, though, seeing him not in a lot of best 22s. Uh, my boy, Matt Allison. Yeah, just joking. Def- is he defense eligible, is he? Yeah, he's ah. uh, played played as a key defense, key forward in, in previous years. Hmm. There you go. Um, might have an opportunity uh, with Max King being injured. But anyway, let's skip past him. Charlie yeah. Dean's there. Will Gould. Doesn't exist, but he's there. Is there anyone else in this sort of super cheap price packet that um, we need to look at? Uh, it's hard to tell. I mean, everyone's tearing up the track. So you've got like Darcy Wilmot's um, one that could be in the side, but I don't know. It makes it pretty hard to break into that Brisbane side with so many coming up in the off season. We'll get somebody that crops up like a, if it's like a Jacob Bryan or like a Caleb Smith or someone that was drafted last year who who suddenly like, Leaps into contention, Lockie Cowan maybe, you know, an outside chance to do that sort of thing. But I think at this stage we, we leave it as is. Maybe leave it as is. If we need to swing somebody, you know, like a Goda or a Gimby into the middle, we can do that. Um, but I think we'll do that down the line. Let's keep piecing together rookie prize players. Let's jump into the midfield. So just for those out there at the moment, the defense is Goda, Gimby, McKenna, Weddle, Chess are the five of eight players selected. Probably going to change that around at some stage. But let's look at rookie prize players in the midfield. We'll go. We'll start off discussions with Will Ashcroft Patch for the sake of this. Are we putting him in? Yep. Easy Dis- discussion over. Um, next down on the list is maybe a George Wardlaw. Is he someone we're interested in? Um, yeah, if he's playing round one, then I, you know, he's got the footy pedigree. He we didn't see a lot of him last year. I think he'll be quite good at football. Um, he'll play, um, I believe. So yeah, I, I think he's. I think he's in there. Damo would be. Um, giving us a 20-minute essay on Liam Henry if he was here, but I'd think we'd give him a skip. 
and Nick Cox. Looks like he's playing key back. So Yuck. that's a big no thank you for a 200K midfielder. Eliza Chartis has had an injury in the preseason. God, so disappointed. I mean, that's all right. We, we've got buys for the first eight weeks of the season, so I said it'll be fine. Cam McKenzie from Hawthorne at 180K I like as an yep. option. Yep. I'm going to temporarily put him in patch. Yes. Toby McLean, we're going to have in the forward line. I'm telling you that right now. Yep. Jai Clark, is he going to play? I... Geelong are pretty good at playing the rookies, but I don't know if he gets a decent crack at it. I don't know how he fits. Um, I think we maybe leave him for now, is my gut. Matthias Philippou is probably the next one, who, but I don't think he's going to play early, and I don't think he's going to play in a super coach friendly role early, no, much I think, as I love him. Yeah, I think, yeah, we, we'd pick him in the forward line at any rate, I think, if we were picking him. So I think we just scroll down to Ollie Hollands and click add, and then... Keep scrolling. Uh, unless yeah. Jack think... Bytel is being talked up this offseason. I'm I, just I'm not buying into any hype. I just Thank like I read no, yeah. no, no, just hype in general. Oh. I read I read West Coast like you know, preseason like match report the other day and like fifteen players are gonna win the brown low from West Coast, it sounds like. Like mm. I put a, I put a thousand dollars on them to win the flag because it was just they're they're so good. They're training down the house. It's incredible. Like I uh I, I'm not listening to any any hype coming out of Fair. training tracks. So Jack Bytel is in no different position to me than he was at the end of last year. And I, I will wait until we see him play a practice game before I change my mind. Well, what about your boy Will Phillips, who missed most, well, missed all of last year? Um, yeah, if Phillips is playing at 153K, you, you pick him and in he goes. Chuck him in. Jasper Fletcher, I'm not gonna we're not gonna start. Harry Roston or Rouston is someone patch. I'm actually super, super high on. I yeah, just don't I... want to have to pick a GWS midfielder. Oh, I know it feels bad, doesn't it? I think we flick him in the same theory as I had with McKenna. It's it's easy to downgrade him. Yeah. Um and then we're gonna know, remove if, if, quite a few of these rookies by yeah. the end, by the way, just if, looking if, at the team. Yeah, if we scroll down further and we're like, oh, this player is far better, then obviously we can we can look back and go, right, who do we get rid of? And that's probably at this stage, Rouston would be on that list, but I don't know, we'll get down there. Once we keep ch- scrolling down, and please oh. don't, oh, some of these names. I'm are temporarily adding in Connor Blakely. I'm just temporarily oh, adding dog. in. Temporarily. Oh, uh, God, that feels bad. I hate, I do not want to pick Connor Blakely at all. I, I think like he'll probably get games, but Christ, it just hurts. It hurts he only needs, He just needs to play to make money. I know, but oh, it feels bad. Josh Sin is going to be a best 22 player at some stage, but he's injured right now. Corey Warner, James Willis missed all the last year. Jackson Binns isn't going to play for the Blues at any stage. Just scrolling through. Zach Taylor, if he breaks into the Adelaide side. I know a lot of Adelaide fans are big on him, but Adelaide themselves don't like playing anyone that's not a, a Ben Keys type, so... He'll play in the forward line as well. If you listen to one of the episodes uh, of the mailbag, they talk yep. about him. Ollie Hotton is going to miss most of the year. Uh, okay. I re- well, Corey Wagner or Wagner or Wagner or Wagner. He probably has to be in one of the benches, one of the bench lines for Frio. I, yeah, Damo's big on him, and that's good enough for me. But Connor, uh, sorry, not Connor Johnson, Matthew Johnson uh, from Frio missed all of last year. That uh, was the slider in that draft. I think at this stage he probably finds a spot. Um, I don't know. You know, I thought he'd slide straight into Monday's spot. O'Meara coming in complicates it a little bit, but I think he's someone that at this stage maybe we'll look at starting. Well, let's, uh, yeah, well, you know what? Let's just chuck them in because we're going to have to remove a lot of these rookies, so we may as yep. well. Let's move to the ruck line. Is there any rookie-priced ruckman that we need to consider? Um, I haven't looked at the rookies in the ruck at all because I just went straight to the bottom and went, right, who's the ruck forward I can use as a loop? Um, Harry Barnett is still very young and raw, and I don't think they throw him to the wolves straight off the bat. Ned Moyle, if Jared Witt so much as sneezes wrong in the off season. Uh, has a good run. So I think he'd be the one, unless Max Heath um, tries to fill that Max King void. Um, well, according to uh, Foz, who's the Geelong track watcher, Asava Radagalia has been playing in the ruck at 174k. Well, 
I, Geelong have 12 Ruckman on their list and all 12 of them will play the exact same number of games. If Radigali is going to play the first six, then maybe, but I, uh, I right, I'll believe it when I say it. Let's just check in their cheapy Ruck foot. Nick mean? Madden. Nick Madden, welcome to the team. 102K, just in awe at the size of the lad. And for the forwards, let's look at some rookie-priced forwards. Aaron Cadman at 207K. He's going to play patch. He's not yep. going to score, I don't think. Yeah. Do you want him in the team? I've kind of gone off him a little bit um, as the preseason's progressed. I don't know. I, I will add him there, and he might. he's probably the first one that gets cut, but I think yep. we, we add him for the minute. Do we look scroll just a tiny bit further up? Oscar Allen at 210K. Is he, yeah, is he he's rookie? A, he's another interesting selection. He's another interesting I think selection. maybe we, we hit yes and then see and work how it we out. go. Orazio Fantasia, don't want any part of. William Henry, no thanks. Harry Sheasel, no thanks. Um, Toby McLean. Yep. Toby McLean's being locked in. The Ben King discussion needs to happen. Is he worth putting on your field at an F5, F6 position? On field? God, no. Absolutely not. No. No, not on field. On a bench to slowly slowly generate cash on the bench. I reckon we hit yes and then take him out if needed. Um, I don't love the full. No. Um, Asava, you've mentioned, I think we steer clear for the minute. Um, Luke Pedler. He's a player. He's a player. I think Adelaide fans like him. I think if he gets a run in the midfield, he'd be worth a crack as a forward eligible player. Um. We've got a, there's so many players on Adelaide's list that are like, like, oh, they're close almost. Yep. Um, Pedler, you... where did we have Pedler in our preseason depth charts? That's a good point. We had him as as depth for the mid behind right, guys okay. like Schoenberg, Berry, Sloan, Keys, Laird. Right, well, maybe we leave him off for yeah, the minute. I think we leave him off for now. Yep. Just uh, for the moment, uh, David Cunningham, if he plays, is is an interesting price point. Josh Bruce, a lot of people are talking about in a defensive role at one sixty one k. You love Josh Bruce. I love Josh Bruce. I don't think he's. I think don't think he's first choice. I think it's he's playing down there if someone goes down, and then you know Liam Jones has a hamstring. Josh Bruce comes in and plays four weeks as a defender, and then slides back to the VFL. But yeah, I, I don't know. I I can't see him being best twenty two at this point. But God love him. Francis Evans moved clubs, so people want to pick him, but that's not a reason to pick him. No, Jai Menzi, I think, will play, but probably not score all that well as a small forward. Um, I really like him. Same story for Tom Berry. Yep. So if we're desperate, those two can jump onto the list when round one, no one is named. Fergus Green, like dog. Fergus Green from Hawthorne was signed just before the draft as a delisted tree agent, and I think they've... They love their Box Hill players. He seems like a good lad. I think they'll play him. I'd be surprised if they didn't. I think they'll play him in a Dylan Moore role from last year, and then Dylan Moore will play up the field even more. So I think uh, I think he'll be a good pick. Yeah, and plus they had Gunston come out of that forward line, so we yep. know there's some voids of significance there. So I think Fergus Green goes in. Probably not going to be a huge scorer, but I think he goes in. Looking through right. the rest of the rookie price players, there's no one hugely jumping out at me. No, there'll be somebody that jumps out, you know, as we get through the um, the preseason game. Someone like a Kobe Bergeel or like a, you know, like a Cooper Harvey, who I know you're pretty big on, or like Noah Long or like Joe Richards might crop up. Um, there are a few players there that I think we can pick one, just a, a generic 117K forward, and one of them will appear before round one. Mm-hmm. And that way it makes it easy to make a call on Cadman, Allen, etc. Um, well, for the sake of discussion, I'm putting Cooper Harvey in. Cool. I have got Joe Richards and they're the same price, so we'll we'll go with it. And the same positions. Yeah. All right. So we've got our rookies in. We've yep. we've already got 21 players selected, so obviously we're going to cull here, but it's important to start with the rookies, work out where you can yep. generate we, cash. For this video, do you have are you doing screen capture for what the what the side looks like? Yeah, or I'll, is I'll, this... I'll chuck them up. I'll chuck I'll chuck up some uh screenshots. Okay. I won't capture cool. it. So for those listening along at home, just to recap, we've got Goto, Gimby, McKenna, Chesser, Weddle in the back line, Ashcroft, Wardlaw, McKenzie, Hollands, Phillips, Roust and Blakely, Johnson, Hewitt. I picked in there as well, Elijah Hewitt in the midfield, Nick Madden as a loophole R3 ruck, and then Cadman, Oscar Allen, Toby McLean, Ben King, Fergus Green, and, you know, pick your poison at 117k in the forward line. If you're playing along at home, feel free to play along at home. I don't know. Maybe this could be so- fun. 
what this tells us pretty early patch is it looks like the cash gen is going to come from defense and from the midfield. You know what that means, Lake Dog. Go big in the forward line. Yep, but also we can Don't go pick so, anyone che- in defense. <laughs> so cheap in the back line. Oh, boy, right, I'm excited. Which position do we want to fill here? Which um, you, I'll let you, you can pick. You can choose which uh, where we're starting. Let's go to defense because there's some... Um, I don't like all of the discussion is how many of the 600 K players are we picking this year in defense? And my answer is why would we pick any of them? Why, so why would you pick any of your them? Thoughts. I look, I mean, they look real nice. Like Jack Sinclair was good last year. James Sisley is good at football. Tom Stewart scores lots of points and hurt me when I didn't have him. Sam Doherty, incredible. What a human. Um, I'm just going to keep scrolling. Just keep scrolling yeah. because they're all really expensive and they'll lose cash. And I, I don't know. I just, I, I've never been a big spender in the back line and it's now ingrained into my personality that I refuse to take a look at them. I really like Sam Doherty. I think he'll be really, really good. Um, potentially better in AFL fantasy, but I think he'll still be very good uh, at football. Angus Brayshaw is the first one that I scroll down and really want to interrogate. So are, are we just in agreement we're, we're not going over 600K because we want to be no, sure in the back No, it's line. ridiculous. It's too much money. Even for All right, I'm going to play devil's avocado. Even for somebody averaging 115, say James Sicily comes out, averages 115, he's, he's going to be the new captain of Hawthorne. The only one down there that'll be kind of taking intercept marks and like marshalling the the back line, taking kickouts, he, he'll score a lot of points. You know, you can lock in a lot of points, lock in a primo. Mm. There's no, there's, you know, aside, injury aside, I can't see any risk with it. Why, why are we not just locking in Sicily at 624k? Is it any different to picking a 650k midfielder? I think there's a higher ceiling with midfielders um, in general. I think just the way the roles are, and you know. There's no one in the back line. At the moment, I can see averaging 120 plus, but there's guys in the midfield priced at 115 that I think can average 120 plus. Um, and it only takes a 70 for a guy to drop 50 to 100 grand and we're upgrading a rookie to James Sicily in round four, five, six, seven. Um, I know that's not the best way because I do like locking in total points patch, but I just don't think there's going to be a huge difference in terms of total points between a guy like Sam Doherty and a guy like Bailey Dale, who's 50K cheaper, or even like a Luke Ryan, who's cheap, or even a Nick Dacos, who there's a lot of question marks over. So I, I just can't bring myself to spend that kind of cash on a defender. Fair enough. Uh, fair enough. So that's the reason I'm very interested in Angus Brayshaw, because, and I know I said I wasn't looking into too much uh, preseason stuff, but he was doing it at the back end of last year. Angus Brayshaw playing in an inside mid role. Um, after spending a bit of time on the back flank last year. Any interest? I'm happy to pick him. He's technically still $300 too expensive for my 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 hard and fast rules, but for the sake of this, he's definitely one that I'm looking at. Uh, as, you know, Bailey Dale's 561, Angus Brayshaw's 550. I think the, the difference in their total points is going to be negligible, and I can see Brayshaw pushing his average from a 100 to a 105 to 110 uh, at a pinch, and that's value. Yeah, I can see a world where Brayshaw does go 115 if he if he does get that plum roll. I don't know how it fits. I obviously pre-season dependent, um, but he's, he's someone I'm looking at pretty closely and will watch pretty intensely. Um alongside um, Isaac Cumming is the other one I'm really interested in. Um, Interesting. Back there. Uh, I still hate picking GWS players. Um, yep. Guys I like around this price point, Bailey Dale, Angus Brayshaw, Luke Ryan, I quite like. And and your boy, who I swore off because he was absolutely putrid when I picked him last year, but Mason Redman, I think there's reason to... to there's a reasonable enough data set to say that he'll score higher than an average of 92.8. Yeah, I, I, he was my first player picked when Supercoach opened, um, and I think, he, I think he's got another level in him where he gets to that 100, maybe 105 average. Um, you know, just they, they look for him. They keep wanting to use him. He's got a, a booming kick. Um, just complain. Yeah, yeah. I, I, very good off halfback. I I think we we pick him, Mason Let's Redmond. I think it. there's huge upside. It's I mean him and Hayden Young kind of splitting hairs 
at 508k, but Mason Redmond is my boy, so I think we go Redmond over Young purely on that. And then, you know, obviously preseason, maybe Young's playing through the guts or something. I don't know, but I, I really like Mason Redmond. I really think he's got got some um, some good chops ahead of him. Me too. I also like Nick Dacos. He, I not I don't I, he's not an absolute must have for me, but I really like Nick Dacos this year. Um, he's just unbelievable and has a pretty basically no matter which role he's playing in he's going to be a good super coach friendly role uh but there's still i would like to see how that collingwood lineup runs out uh with the couple of additions they made in the offseason mm, yeah i'd want to see them first before i commit to to Dacos, but at this stage i'd be pretty happy to to slide him in there jordan ridley i seen some people say that um you know the new arrival at essendon means that he'll be freed up i will believe that when i see it um, and not a moment before. Um, yeah, he, he keeps rolling down once he's starting to get into the 490Ks. Yeah. I heard I heard Caleb Danny was playing as a midfielder, which just took it off the bingo box and keeps scrolling because yeah. I'll believe when I see it. Elliot Yo at $337,000. Oh, Price to I... average 68. There's value there, Lek Dog. There is. There's value there. It kind of makes my skin crawl, though, uh, just because he's very good at getting very injured. He is. So let's look at his last few seasons. Uh, let's go back to 2019 because that's the last kind of full season he had. 21 games for an average of 107.6, then 10 games for 89.9, then 12 games for 86.5, then five games for 68. So we, he's going to get injured. We, we, we should assume that. But his 10 games of... Elio at an average of 85 plus when he's priced at 68. Is that enough upside to squeeze him into this team? Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't feel great about it. The two iterations of my side I have done, one had one mid-price and one had zero mid-prices. And the one without mid-prices felt really nice. Um, I think if, you're, if some of these rookies fall over, then I think there's case to have him at, you know, like a, a D5, a D4, D5. I'd the idea of having Elliot Yo at D three, I'm a little bit concerned at. But if he comes out and averages ninety, if they, because who do, who does West Coast have um, to to play exactly. that midfield role? A, a lot of kids, and they'll need someone in there with some experience. And I think I think Yo's a decent shout. It I don't like it. It worries me a fair bit. But if he gets eight games in and averages eighty five ninety, then that's that's a win at that price. So. All right, well, for, look, for the time being, let's do this. We'll yep. go Guns and Rookies in defense. He can sit out. Let's pick another 500 to 600K player. Um, my vote would be on a – my. here's how I would order it. Bailey Dale, uh, Luke Ryan, Nick Dacos. Who's your top three preferences in this spot? Um, I think Brayshaw. Um... Brayshaw's in. Oh, Brayshaw's already in. Let's right. put him in. Him and yep. Redmond are in. They're right. out at, at D1 and D2. There we go, D1, D2. And then for the third slot, I think, oh, yeah, I think, I'm not sure. I'd, yeah, it's kind of, I've gone around and it could be any of them and I'd be pretty happy with it. Um, I really like Luke Ryan. He's my boy, but I think Bailey Dale's a safer choice. Uh, All right. A, a bit more a bit more. I'm cash. using my lock. We're putting Bailey Dale in. Right. Let's end this discussion. Lock All right. So the defense patch pre-tweaking is Bailey Dale. Angus Brayshaw, Mason Redman, Josh Goda, Ruben Ginby, Connor McKenna, Josh Weddle, Campbell Chesser. Bang. Guns Bang. and rookies. Yep. Keep it simple, stupid. Which position do you want to do now? Let's go to the rucks. Let's just, yeah. let's, I, because what we do here will dictate a fair bit of everything else. If we spend big on, if we just go, say, Gorn and Wits, or if we go super cheap, like some people are going, um, what are your thoughts on this dumpster bin of a of a rock of a line? Are you like do you just want to set and forget, or are you are you not going there this year? Because obviously we don't have you know Gorn and Grundy playing on the same side is an interesting proposition. How do you feel? I still think Grun- uh, Grundy is underpriced, but I think out of principle, I don't think we can pick either one of them. Someone said this to me on Twitter. What other fifty percent time ruckman would you consider putting in your team? 
Well, the answer's not many. Not many. I mean, the last time we had two incredible rucks in the same team was Nick Nat and Dean Cox. Yeah, and um, it was a different scoring system. So It was, and Nick Nat was also playing as a ruck rover at points because he, Nick Nat knew he can do whatever the hell he wants, um, which, you know, I'd... I'd yeah, I'd, I'd need to be convinced that they can do it in the same side. You know, there, there'll be games where they both score, you know, 250 between them. But, yeah, I, I think we steer clear. That's my gut feel. I'm not selecting this guy. I'm just saying. I said this last preseason. I think it applies this year. I think Mark Pitnett's going to get his average up to around 100 uh, in the games he plays. He's going to be the number one ruckman. He's underpriced, but his body isn't durable. I'm just putting that out there. So the guys that I think are legitimately in consideration here, Patch, mm-hmm. Wits, English, Darcy, O'Brien, Nank, Rowan Marshall, as your as your R one. Yep. Um, of those two, English, Marshall, Darcy, in that order, are probably my preference. Yeah. Um, I just feel pretty safe with Tim English now that they're, there's not really, you know, they've got Lob, that's that's their backup, that's their chop out. They're not going to play a second Ruckman and Lob and English. It's 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 Tim English or bust for them. So so he's he is their number one Ruckman. And yeah. He's priced to average 105.5. He's 580K. Can he exceed that? Um, he he can exceed that. Um, I don't know if he does. Um, you know, he obviously had a few games there where you know he I think he had the one where he was he was quite ill on his quite ill, or he had a, a comeback game that was um, not as impressive last year. So I think that cut his numbers a little bit from memory. Um, just kind of spitballing there. Um, I think there's a little bit of scope to improve it, um, but also if he just holds it, I'm I'm more than happy for my rucks just to hold their average, hold their like hold their price and not make me have to trade in that ruck line. Yep. I don't want to do it. All right, Tim English, and I'm and I, I'm putting Rowan Marshall in. I'm happy for you to veto this, but I just think he's, an, again, a clear number one ruck with upside. So the yep. difference I'm, I'm, I'm saying between a Marshall and an English versus like a Darcy and an O'Brien, when they've been the solo ruckman with English and Marshall, we've seen them exceed these like, you know, averages of 100 whereas Riley O'Brien is is what you get you see what you get on the pack he's going to give you an average of 100 and they're going to play him every single game of the year which is good but I just don't see much upside in him no agreed uh, Marshall is is quite cheap based on the role from last year obviously if it comes out and he's playing full forward for a few weeks and they have Tommy Campbell we change it but I think at this stage we go with it and just as a fact check on myself before I said that uh, the two rounds around Tim English's injury were bad last year. He scored 135 in round five and then missed six weeks and then came back and scored 160. So mm, that's the opposite. That's the opposite of bad. That's quite good. Other guys I just want to flag are guys like Scott Lassett, Lloyd Meek, who I think are going to be number one ruckman, who are underpriced, but I need to see them perform before. They're similar boat to Mark Pitnett, where you're like, in theory, it all works, but I need to actually see it. Yeah, exactly. It's um, I I still reckon Hawthorne's up for grabs between Meek and Reeves with um with Lynch playing forward chop out. But yeah, who who knows at this stage? It's all vibes. Um, and but also on... if if Lysette goes down again, big watch on Brun Tickle. But yeah, and I just wanted to make one note on Real Marshall. We all know this, but they they're talking about not using him to fill the the king role. They're looking at guys like Cooper Sharman and. Matt Allison and uh, you know like that they all those second and third stringers to fill that yeah. role. They've they're not looking at this stage. It looks like Rowan Marshall won't be that option. Yeah. So we're, we we haven't picked uh, Sean Darcy and haven't spoken much about that that non selection. There is that kind of a you know that that the Jackson effect of not knowing what Luke Jackson will do to that side. Yeah. Look, I, I he was in my first draft of my actual team, Sean Darcy. Um, no issues with picking him. But Luke Jackson, they're going to lean on him relatively heavily. Sean Darcy, I think he's out of contract at the end of this year, so maybe that's a good thing, but maybe it's a bad thing. Maybe it's a distraction. I'm just happy to go. I know what Tim English, Tim English is, and I know what Rowan Marshall is. Yep. Yep, I'm happy with that. Just set, just lock it in, set and forget. Hopefully, barring injuries, you don't have to make any trades through that year. Let's do forward line. Josh Dunkley? Yes. I'm just picking Josh Dunkley. Josh Dunkley, yes. Now, 
my normal rules would be that he's way too expensive, but I'm looking him at as a midfielder, not a forward, because yes. he's going to be playing next to Lockie Neal under OMAC. I just think he's going to, he's going to, he's priced average 108.3. He's going to score that. Uh, yep, yeah, he could go 115, 120, like he could do. Um, and it was on, I think it was either Draft Doctors or Keeper League. One of those two had a, you know, a, a good point talking about the fact that Brisbane, you know, historically they don't all score really well, but they've got two or three players that will just go gangbusters. And that's been near, like a few years ago, it was Neil and Lyons that went nuts. And, you know, Neil McCluggage have, have gone bananas before. You know, normally they have two that do really well. And I think it's pretty clear cut that it's Lockie Neal and Josh Dunkley that will go B A and A N A S this year. Yes. All right, let's jump in. So we'll continue in the forward line. In my personal team, I'm probably going to end up with Stephen Ganigliog. I just think all the signs are there for him to continue what doing what he did last year. But at 557K, when you've already invested 600-odd K into Josh Dunkley, is he someone that, that we consider? There's a lot of guys in this 500 to 550K range I like. I'll just list them for you, Patch. Ganigliog, Dylan Moore, Connor Rosie. Uh, they're probably the big three for me. And Tim Taranto's yep. in the discussion as well, but I think yep. he's fourth place for me. Yeah, no, I, I'm in the same boat. I, I'm intrigued by Canilio, by Moore, by Rosie, even um, even a little bit by Zach Butters. I think there's still scope for him to do a lot better um, and to, to score more. Um, but yeah, I, it's, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not as not as sold on, on Butters as I am as the others that you've mentioned. I'll tell you what, um, I'm booting our two 200k forwards because we're going to need the space to get in all the guys we want. We will, yep. Um, I'm going to use my lock on Dylan Moore. Just gut feel. I wanted to pick him all the last year and didn't. And then the last stretch of the year, he went into the midfield and did really, really well. And then all of the midfielders left Hawthorne in the off season. So um, there's you know every chance that he just plays what he did last year and he, he averages 95 again, which was phenomenal as a you know, high half forward rotating into the midfield and onto the wing, he could become a center square midfielder and yep. the rest forward. You know, he's got the skills, he's got the run, he's got the you know, the agility that I think I, I'm just gonna use my lock on him. It's gut feel. It could it could go wrong. He could average seventy. Um I like it. I, I he's in, he's gonna be in my team as well, I think. Uh I really, I can't use another lock. I really want to put Connor Rosie in this team. I, everything he he showed last year, because I grabbed him after one game in the midfield. I saw him in person in one game in the midfield. And I said, "This guy needs to be in my team." It was against the Carl- Carlton. They threw him in in the second half, and he almost won it for him. I just think he's unbelievable. Yeah, I um, yeah, all right. Well, we'll, we'll I'll briefly play devil's advocate, looking at you know you've got. A lot of really good young talent going through that midfield. You've got, you know, Rosie, you've got Butters, you've got, um, you know, Jason Horn Francis, they bought in. They've got a host of youngsters. They've got like Willem Drew still there. They've got um, Ebert or Boak, which one's still on the list? Which one Boak's retired? on the list. They've got Wines. Boak's still there. Wines, I, I forgot the Brownlow medalist. That's how loaded they are. Um, it's, yeah, it's, there, there's a lot there. There's a lot there. Are we convinced that um, that Rosie can be the one that steps in? I mean... And he, becomes a, a, he, a full-time mid, not just rotating through? I th- But I don't necessarily think, really think rotating through is a bad thing for him. He's a guy who can kick goals in the score. So here's from the Carlton game. I grabbed him after the Carlton game. So when was that? Admittedly, that was pretty early in the year. So that was in round five. They played Carlton. After that, he went 153, 87, 74, 116, 46, shit game, 106, 76, 103, 113, 98, 154, 116, 91, 119, 67, 76, 162. So he's he's got a higher ceiling. In that time, uh, he only failed to get above 20 disposals once exceeded 30 disposals quite a few times and was still able to go forward and actually hit the scoreboard with with a goal uh, pretty much a goal 1.5 goals every game um 
I mean, I'll, I'm going to pick him in, in real life. He doesn't have to be picked for this, but he's primed. He's 23. They gave him the midfield time last year. I don't think they're going to take it away from him. It's Oh, it's it's his breakout season. And at 513K, he's he's underpriced for what he could do. He could go to 110. He could go, you know, 100 and you'd take that, but he could go further than that. Um, you know, be- wonderful friend of the pod, the beautiful Tim Mitchell. I'm going to use his lock on Connor Rosie. In, right. in his place because I think, I mean, that's what he wants. He messages that to us this week. Um, and, I yeah, I, I'm worried about missing out on a breakout season from Rosie as opposed to, like, it's more of a fear selection than I'm convinced he's going to do it. It's just that he might do it and everyone else will have picked him. And if I'm not on board, then that train's not coming back to the station to pick me up. So our current midfield is... Dunkley, Moore, Rosie, McLean, King, Green, Harvey. We've probably got room for one, maybe two more players if we remove a rookie. There's a couple of names I want to throw at you, and as I'm throwing them at you, I'll keep scrolling. But Errol Goulden, Darcy Cameron are the first two names I'd like you to consider. I like both of those very much. Um, I think Cameron would be... You know, Price to average 84, he will probably exceed that because they're bought in Damick Day. Um, Big Cox won't be in the side. Then I'm I'm reading the tea leaves there that that they're just going to give Dust Cameron the role. He's underpriced. Then he could average you know, 95 to 100. Um, if we were going with a, a shonky ruck line or or going with a pitonet, who I, I I do quite like as a pick, um, I think he'd be essential. He's not essential to this side. I still think he's really good. Um, Golden. Is kind of like your, your, your B grade Connor Rosie. If you can't afford Connor Rosie, mm. Errol Goulden's the next best. I would want to see how that Sydney midfield shakes out a little bit. And if he if he gets stranded on a wing, then it's a bit more of a risk. So I don't particularly love like I I really love Errol Goulden. I don't know about him as a as a pick at four seventy two K. If he was three hundred and fifty, then short, sure, have a shot. But yeah, I am just not sold at that price. Right, so let's let's look at some cheaper players again. I'll throw him at you. Nat Fife is a name we legally have to consider. Mm. Taron Thomas, role change, although off-season issues um, and awful, just terrible last year. They're two guys around that 300K mark. And then there's a couple of names I could talk myself into in that 200 to 300K, but I think they're probably the main two I'm looking at. Yeah, I think so. The one you might have scrolled past at 420K, Ben Cunnington. Oh, um, yes. Uh, yes. Who was who... my first pick in um, my actual team. Yes, who, yeah, I, I, like, I, I don't think Cunnington can play anything other than midfield, can he? It's not like they'll no. potentially, you know, roll him into a into a half forward role or do what they're doing with Rory Sloan, and he can't move to half back. Like he's he's just playing midfield. Do you, what what do you think he'll average? He mate, he could he could average one hundred and five. He could average a hundred to one hundred and ten. Um, the the thing with him is is obviously the you know there's some risks around his health and his body but you can't run out and teams know this you can't just run out a, a baby bodied midfield now Jai Simpkins uh, bigger body obviously he's he's developed and Davies Uniac is growing as well but I think they need a Cunnington in there to be that to be that you know that uh, the bull <laughs> yeah. but to be that mature head. In the midfield, he's priced average. Well, he's discounted, so he's four twenty k. In the past, and I know he's had missed essentially. You know, well, he missed last year and has missed a bunch of time in the past. But he's averaging over the last few years one hundred eight point seven, one hundred two point three, one hundred two ninety six, ninety one eighty, ninety two, ninety two, ninety five. If he averages somewhere between ninety five and one hundred and five at four hundred and twenty k, he's going to be up there as a as a forward option, assuming he plays, and I think we need to assume he's going to play, yeah, because um, it sounds like the cancer and all that's behind him. Thank God, he's value, and he has he has forward mid swing as a a little bit of flexibility. Yeah, I um I prefer him over Nat Five by a fair Me margin. Too. Um, Me too. As much as Nat Five is a, a legend of the game, incredible footballer, the body just concerns me from a super coach perspective, and so does the role a little bit if he's you know leading out of the goal square great for football great like turn up and watch every Freo game you can get to but 
I, that's demo. We know you think that he can still score a hundred playing out of the forward line. We know. <laughs> we we know. I, there aren't many players that can do it, but you know. I'll say this though. Let's look. Let's look at Fife's averages. Last year, seven games for an average of sixty three point three. He's not going to play a full season. But here yep. are his averages going back. 100, 113, 120, 114, oh, 109, man. 105, 124, 122, 106 patch. While talking, man, he was good. I don't, want to t- I don't want to choose him over Ben Cunnington, but I would be willing to forgo another rookie to put him into this team. I Well, I mean, you, you say all those numbers and then with the, you know, the qualm that aside from the first few seasons, you know, first three or four seasons, they were always a full-time midfielder. Um, and that's not what he's going to be this year because Frio doesn't doesn't need him to be a full-time midfielder. So, you know, maybe he maybe he's as good as a key forward as Tom Hawkins can be and averages 100. You know, averages 95. But the body, the body concern, it, it, you know, I know he could come out and average 90 in the first eight weeks and then get injured and that's made enough cash, but it's just... I, I don't know. It just feels a bit. A well, I'm bit looking strange. at where we've got. We've got over two point two mil left in the bank. Ben King, I really don't want in my team. Can we just chuck five in? See what it looks like. Yeah, see right. if we can finish our midfield. Yeah, and then all reassess. Right. All right. Because I don't think Cash Gen is coming from the rookie price players in the forward line this year. No, I think you're right. And you know, looking at, you know, yeah. Your Cooper Harvey, your Fergus Green, they're not going to score a lot while they're on that. You know, Toby McLean will will hopefully pump out 80s, um, but, you know, that F6 role could well average 50. And, yeah, sure, you're right. Um, All right. Let, let, let's, let's see how it looks. Let's pick let's, some midfielders. Let's go to the midfield. We're going to need a cut rookies here. Yep. Um, we've essentially got uh, probably three rookies we need to cut here. In the midfield, but let's go. Who's our Who's our M one? Look, I I for the last few years it's been Clayton Oliver for me because he's just so it's it's not even the fact that he's averaged one hundred and twenty seven last year, which is bonkers, but the fact that he's so consistent while doing it, you, he he doesn't give you a bad game. He does not give you a bad game, um, and I you know he's like he's twenty five and he's still you know getting to the point where. You know, looking forward, he could well finish his career in the same breath as Gary Ablett Jr. Like from, you know, his first season, 13 games at 70, and then 22 games, 111, 22 games, 114, 22 games, 109, 17 games, 122, 22 games, 123, 21 games, 127. He doesn't miss games of football. He doesn't miss scoring points in those games of football. Anyone that's not starting him is an absolute mad man or woman and he's in i i i, I don't want to be in him. plus he's sub 700k by 200 dollars <laughs> uh rory led i think is a fantastic selection as well but i just would rather i don't think you can pick two and i'd rather clayton oliver mm-hmm. lucky yep. neil i don't want in my team at this stage Took yeah Waller, i mean you- i like a lot Yep, I think Took stays where he is. Lockie Neal's a chance to slide back once you add Dunkley in, Ashcroft in. You know, you try and get a few more, you know, a bit more development to some of those other players. I think it's I think it's a wait and see on Neal, and maybe you upgrade to him during the season once fears have been laid. Callum Mills still concerns me injury wise. I really want to pick Callum Mills. <laughs> I, oh, Callum he's... Mills, Marcus Bontepelli, and Jack McRae, uh, my uh, are, the, are three players that I will start in 2023 pending injuries in my personal team. I, how are you fitting all three of them in, plus Clayton Oliver and then all of hey, the we're, value We're picks. about to be able to do it in this team, so don't you worry about that. All right, well, so you, you'd pick all what, three. You're well, picking pick, all three let's, Okay, let's just break it down. If we had to pick one of them, who are you picking? I know who I'm picking. Probably Bond. Maybe McRae. Jack McRae. No, Maybe Jack McRae. Time. No, yeah. yeah. Dunkley's gone. Why would he not? Yep, Dunkley's yeah. gone. Jack McRae had a bad year and he was still like one of the, I think, what was he, like the fifth highest scorer, sixth highest scorer? He was very high scoring. Yep. So uh, which rookie are we cutting to chuck in Jack McRae? Johnson? We'll go the cheapest one. Hold on, sorry, you've picked Mills, have you? Oh, Oliver. sorry. Oliver. Sorry, I've got Hewitt in there, which is also clocking up, and I'm like, why do we need to cut someone already? 
Um, um, I'm putting Jake McRae. All right. So sorry, you've you've got Oliver McRae, and that's they're the two primos we've got. They're the two primos. Yep. Uh, I've got yeah one one spot on the bench as well available. Yep. Okay. So now let's talk. We've got a million bucks in the bank, do we? One million five thousand. Have we both got the same team? Uh, once I get rid of, nope, nope. I don't know what I've done here. I've got Pretty Ashcroft, nice. Wardlaw, Mackenzie, Hollands, Phillips, Rouston, Blakely, Johnson, Oliver, and McRae in the midfield with one spot free. Oh, I've got Wagner over Johnson. Ah, but whatever doesn't matter. There we go. For the time being, I'm just going to remove Wag- Wagner as well. All right. So All we right. should have two spots if you remove. Um, yep. Yep. One point one two two three zero zero. One point one two two. So not quite enough for two six hundred k players, but before we, in fact, before we pick, look at the other six hundred k players. There's some breakout players that people like this year: Davies Uniac, Noah Anderson, Bailey Smith. Are any of these names people that you want in your super? Keep scrolling. Just a little bit further to a little man named Tom Green. Yeah. I thought you might say that. I was always going to say Tom Green. When I say little man, he's also like tall and a goddamn unit. I he's not small at all. I don't know why I said little man. He's could eat me for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and will hopefully eat opposition midfielders for breakfast, lunch, and dinner because <laughs> he's uh, he's. The photos of him in the gym are just cold shower levels. And he's going to have to carry that midfield now that Hopper and Taranto are gone. And he can do it. He can well, bloody do it. Personally, I'm not going to pick him in my team, but I will put him in this team because I know you love him. Yeah. Now, I actually want to discuss three mid prices first before we proceed. Yep. Jacob Hopper, Dom Sheed, and James Wobble. Nope, nope, and... Hmm. See, I don't want Hopper. I don't see the upside there. I no. there's huge upside I see for Sheed and Warple. Yeah, look, Sheed. Yeah, I, the vi- the vibes for Sheed are just like immediately. Oh, I I'm not interested. But he he's so underpriced. But as to what he scored, I don't know what the makeup of that West Coast midfield will be, and it kind of worries me to use not so much a you know he he'll make cash, but if he's going to average 80 and like slowly generate cash, I, no, I, I'm like, I would rather have either a rookie quickly generating cash or a premium quickly generating points. I don't think, I think he's too middle ground. It's like in cricket when you're like, Oh, we'll pick this all rounder that like can bowl a few overs and averages 25. And you're like, but he's not good enough at either of them. Why? No, no, he has to be, he's not doing either of them efficiently enough in my books for Sheed. Yeah, so the argument, I guess, against Sheet and Hoverite is they need to outscore a rookie, an on-field rookie, that by 200 grand's worth of value. Are they going to do that? If they're averaging 80 and you've got a rookie scoring 50 or 60, then, yeah, it's probably worth it. But if we've got midfield rookies averaging 70, that 10-point jump, I just... Uh, which 70s are a big ass from rookie, but yeah, I, I'm with you. I just got some hesitation there, but James Warple, I have a soft spot for. I love yes, James Warple. I know Warple. you do. I know you love James Warple. So I'm completely and... biased in this. Mm, biased and... in this. But, but who else? Who else who is else? it going to be? Who else? You know, for the last few years, it's been, oh, you know, James Warple's been good. You just got to get him at the coal face, and they just didn't get him at the coal face, and they couldn't because they had lots of. You know, lots of even though the team was performing pretty badly, a lot of midfielders that were quite good, um, they don't have them anymore. Lake Dog, they're gone. They don't have them. Warple's career averages seventy three in his first year, ninety seven in his breakout year in two thousand nineteen, eighty eight point three in the twenty twenty season, seventy three point five in twenty twenty one, and then had a terrible, terrible year, fifty six point two. I was talking to some Hawthorne supporters last night. They said Sam Mitchell loves this guy. He's constantly talking about how he's part of the future. He is going to be in this team. And I really, we don't have that many mid prices in this team. We've got a cut. We've got some risky 500k players. We've got Nat Five at 300k. I think we can put Warple in this team. I, 
I all the signs point to yes, but also I had him on field in a few keeper leagues and draft sides and whatnot on a game where he scored eight points. Um, from basically a full game of football, he had a bunch of centre bounce attendances. He was like in the guts. He was not. He was eventually subbed off, but he can go missing. Like, oh boy, he's he can go missing. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna use my veto on James Warple. I God just, damn it! <laughs> I I just feel real bad. I know you love him. I know you love him, and I want to love him. But I've been burned too many times before, and. I, Hawthorne are going to suck so much this year, man. Like they're like somebody does have to get their hands on the ball, but that still might not equate to Warple being good enough to just like to to take up a slot. All right, that's fair. All right, well, let's finish this team, Patrick. We got one spot. We got five eighty seven k. We can downgrade a rookie to a cheaper rookie if we need. Let's just pick another primo round this team out. Yeah. So looking at you know before we start talking about cutting a rookie down, I. Just, Interested in Josh Kelly, but I don't think you can do Green and Kelly because that's that's too much GWS, and I don't, I don't want any more GWS. It's too much. Um, the guys that are there, we've mentioned Cogs, who's forward eligible. Some of these breakout guys are kind of interesting, but I'd probably rather us cut uh, a rookie down and yeah. try and get up a little bit further. Well, who, who's the target here? We've got... So I guys- think... I think Rouston at this stage because he's probably yep. the one that we don't know is is in that side. I feel more comfortable about the rest of them. Let's I think we can Rouston. throw him I'm going down. To change him to Wagner. See what that looks like. It gives us six hundred and ten k. Is that enough to get anyone we want? Not um, quite. Um, so we can maybe drop. We'll drop. Uh, I don't know. Let's drop a, a Cam McKenzie to a cheaper rookie. Yeah. Okay. I'll. Um, even though I, I think he's good, just for the let's let's get the primo in. I'm just chucking in a random 117k player yep. for now. All right, so that leaves us with essentially we can get any midfielder we want. Is it Took? Is it Mills? Is it Bont? Is it Petraka? Is it Merritt? Is it Andrew Brayshaw? Is it Paddy Cripps? All right, well, talk me through what your love of Callum Mills and Marcus Montepelli. Well, Bont is just friggin' good. Uh, he's just consistently really good. Averaged 116 last year, plays pretty much every game. Callum Mills is way more up and down, but the ceiling's high and he's quite young. And I think Sydney's is Sydney's hard. Are they going to dip a little off losing the flat the premiership, uh, the grand final? Are they going to jump back up? I'm not sure. Um, Bond, I just think, is a no-brainer easy pick. It's not a particularly risky pick. I don't think he's going to still kick goals, but he's going to have a bit more time in the midfield than he did last year with Dunkley leaving. They're going to put a lot of onus on him. But then Took Miller's just really, really good. But Took is he going to average 120 again? I, I don't know. 120 is a lot. Um, and, you know, you've got the development from Anderson. You've got a few other younger midfielders coming through. Um, you know, God knows how Matt Rowell does this year. If he can finally take that step, we want him to. Um, to that might you know, nudge Took out a little bit more. I don't know. It's hard to tell. Um the one I, risk we have if we went a bont is we've already got two other primos from the Bulldogs. Yes. In Bailey, Dale, and Jack McRae. Well, three, Toby McLean's a primo. Uh, he is a primo. Um, how do you feel about Andrew Brayshaw? I can hear Damo screaming from WA at us about Andrew Brayshaw. Andrew Brayshaw is really, really good. Uh, is he going to get quite as good as a bont, a Callum Mills, or a Took Miller this year? Potentially, he would need to have, have, add about five points a game to his score. Uh, I know Damo thinks he can do that. Uh, we've got a couple of interesting players have come into that side. Diego Mira went across. I don't know. i got no issues with it. I quite like Zach Merritt as a pick every year because you know exactly what he's going to give you. Yep. He's going to give you about 115 points a game. Yep, and he'll be pretty consistent doing it. Um, you know, I don't think he – I think that's about his, his cap. I don't – see him jumping to 120 especially well not this season um with some more midfielders developing in there um is it worth talking about Crips and Walsh you're not keen on them Jack Steele had a, a poor year last year by his standards and still averaged 109 um, I think I think we just I think we just gotta lock away one of the big guns I think I think it's Took Mills or, or Bont myself at this stage I think yeah. we just lock in the points I kind of want to lock in Took just because he's a, a beast 
Let's well, yeah. I'll let you make the pick here. You can make the call on this one. I I can't really be split. I kind of intrigued by Steel, but yeah, no. We'll we'll go with one of the big three that are still available. Lockie Neal just out of the price point, and we've spoken about already. But so, Took Mills Bond Pally, you can pick. All right, so that makes the team. We're gonna. I'm gonna go through line by line. Bear with me because it's all in the weird order that the team who, picker makes it go into. Who have you picked, Bontepelli? Uh No, I checked in. Took. I checked in. Took. took. All right, cool. Okay, so here's the team we find ourselves with: Bailey Dale, Angus Brayshaw, Mason Redman, Josh Gota, Ruben Ginby, Connor McKenna, Josh Weddle, Campbell Chesser. Midfield is Clayton Oliver, Took Miller, Jack McRae, Tom Green, Will Ashcroft, uh, Will Phillips, Oliver, uh, George Wardlaw, Oliver Hollands, Connor Blakely, Corey Wagner, and a 117K player. I've put in Husswait at the moment. It doesn't matter who that is. Rux, English, Marshall, Madden, forwards, Dunkley, Moore, Rosie, Cunnington, Fife, McLean, Fergus Green, Cooper Harvey. God, what a forward line. And that, my friends, is how you win Supercoach in 2023. If When we both win, do we split the 50K or do we get 50K each? That's a great question. I will ask Tim Mitchell. Um, so that was quite a lengthy uh, ex- uh, experience. So thank you for tuning in, those who have. Patch, yep. thank you for joining me. No, thank I think you. This like was dog. a bit of fun. It was. Um, we'll post up in the comments on the website or the posts on the website. We'll post up screenshots of the team. The video should be on YouTube, assuming that the video worked, which I'm not confident it did. We'll find out. Jump on the website. I've got. I'm actually writing patch. I'm actually writing a piece right now which will be on the website the first article i've written uh in about a year so exciting times over aroused over at jock reynolds headquarters and make sure if you want to join in and contribute get in contact with us there is plenty of opportunities you can also find our content pre-season content in the herald sun website and potentially in print so there's plenty happening patch Oh, it's all happening here at the MCG, as the great Bill Laurie kept saying um, over and over in that wonderful voice of his. Yeah, no, it is it is kicking into gear. Um, remember, you know, don't don't read too much into the preseason stuff. Like, if, if somebody's tearing up the track, wait for another month and see if they're still doing it in the month. But, uh, yeah, get in touch. Reach out. Let us know what your team looks like. Have you been tinkering all the time? Have you only just kind of touched it? The, the picker for non-gold subscribers should be out in a a week or two maybe um so if you're only getting your hands on it for the first time in a week or so um come back to this post this tweet etc and let us know what your team looks like and intrigued as to your thoughts as to how it sets up for this season all right thanks for listening community go blues